Hello and welcome to the second part of my videos about the new text to vector graphic function in Adobe Illustrator. Now, as you might know, the generative AI when generating images is pixel based. So in its heart, it works on pixels. That is because it generates the images out of the diffusion and this cannot work in vectors. So when generating vector artwork, we are looking at auto tracing. And this of course has consequences for the artwork. And there's also something remarkable about how this works in Illustrator. Now let's look at this scene. I have used one of the sample prompts to generate this campfire scene. And when we are looking at auto tracing, then you know it can't do gradients. But in this scene, as you see in here, we have a gradient. So obviously Illustrator can generate at least linear gradients in this text to vector. But the nice background in the sky cannot be generated as a gradient because in this case it would need to be either a blend or a mesh or a freeform gradient and that seems not to be possible. Let's take a look at the next thing. So in Photoshop you can add artwork to that scene and when doing that in Photoshop then Photoshop can analyze what's already there and can adjust the lighting to it and can adjust how that additional artwork gets integrated into the scene. But of course, since this is converted to vector artwork, that's no longer possible. So, but Illustrator can respect what's already there. So let's do that. I'm going to add a person to this scene and the person should play a guitar. And I've already added the prompt in here. So let's click on generate that and let's generate a person to that scene that plays the guitar. And what I would expect it is that the lighting gets adjusted so that the person gets the lighting from the campfire and maybe looks into the direction of the campfire, but we don't get that. So you see, we get, of course, the the color adjustment so that person integrates into the scene and has the same coloring and it's kind of the same the same style and when we look at these then you see they blend in nicely but we do not have these kind of reflection that you would expect uh, along the left side of the person. And also they do not get integrated well into the perspective. Now, in this case, we looking, we are looking straight onto that, but the person seems kind of flying in this scene and I have generated some of them and you see they do not blend in well. So there would still be some work to do and also get some of that fire reflection on those persons. So let's take a look at the next thing. And the next thing would be the adjustment of styles. So let's take a look at this one. And in this case, the style I wanted to pick up was from this zebra and the zebra, let's take a look at outline view. Then you see this has live strokes and because of we the live strokes, we get very exact lines that are the same stroke thickness everywhere. And we can't expect that from the generated artwork because it's auto traced and in there we cannot expect this exact line work. So you see in the artwork I have generated, what we do get is the black lines. Illustrator picks that up, but they are not as exact as we would expect. And also the style of this does not match very well. So we do not get this cartoony style picked up very well. What we do get, as you see in here, is stripes in some of them. So even the bear has some stripes. And of course we get the color, 
but we do not get that style picked up very well. So in here you got different kind of snouts of these animals and that doesn't match the style very well. So next thing, let's look at some of this. So we've got some Delaunay triangulation in this artwork here and those are of course exact straight lines and Illustrator tries to pick that up here but the lines don't get picked up very well. So we've got if you look at it from afar then it looks kind of the same and of course again we get the colors but the Delaunay triangulation doesn't match exactly so you can't expect that either. And then let's take a look at yet another one. So let's take a look at this one and we have added people here and of course we get the same results in there with the perspective of those people. Um, we get a nice color match but then let's take a look at it when we need to edit these persons and maybe adjust how they hold their hands or maybe adjust some details. Let's take a look at this in outline view and you see there's nothing overlapping there. So let's take those apart and you see they are a butting. So we've got exactly neighboring shapes and if you need to edit them and need to edit some of the details like maybe these rucksack details here then you will be kind of in trouble. So editing might get somewhat complicated in here which is also of course caused by the auto tracing. And again, this applies to icons, uh, in particular icons, because in icons we would expect, of course, geometrically exact shapes. So lines need to be straight and of course they need to be symmetrical and that cannot happen. So in here you see these are not circles and these lines here are also not very straight. So let's go into the outline view and select that. And you see that's, well, maybe not really straight. And also, if you take a look at this, this should be symmetrical, but that won't work with these anchor points either. So when generating icons, you are looking into some adjustment. And also, of course, the line weight will not be exact and will not be really, you know, straight. And the line thickness might not match overall as well. So these are great as a starter, but then you need to refine them and edit them and use the existing plugins and tools to really rectify the results. And let's also take a look at the pattern. It's this one and we've got the swatches down here and then we can double click that pattern and take a look at this one. And let's see what we can do in here. So first of all, let's zoom in and take a look at what Illustrator has generated. And maybe you want to move those around and you see that gets difficult because they get punched out of the background. So there's some more editing than you might expect at first glance. So let's move that back. And let's check out what else we can do. So there we have text to pattern and you see you cannot change the file type, which is kind of logical because then this would need to be shifted a lot and the pattern is not really prepared for that. And as you can see here, there we we have some uh, objects that need to be continued on the other side. So there we have them over here and you see the overlap 
makes sure that this gets continued on the other side. So that will match, but if you want to change the repeat type, then you are looking into some more work and need to prepare that first and need to pick out all those elements in order to use them in a different way. So that's what you can do with that pattern. And that's how you can use all this artwork and of course what you can expect and what cannot work, at least currently. Let's see what can be expected from the improvements that are made to Firefly for further versions.